another Genesis study, Genesis chapter 25. We uh, plan on getting through the first 18 verses of this chapter. We want to send out a hillbilly holler to Ryan in Massachusetts. Massachusetts uh, is a place I've never been, but I'm glad to know we got some folks up there listening. And uh, one of these days, maybe I'll make it up there. <clears throat> Um, but uh, we just want to welcome and thank Ryan for listening and uh, just open with a word of prayer and we'll get right into our text, Genesis chapter 25. Uh, Father, we thank you for this time in your word. Pray you help us cover the material um, and uh, do so in a way that is beneficial to the hearer. Lord, more than anything, we want to prepare people so they can understand your word when they read it and hear from you as you lead and guide them in their daily lives. Thank you. And uh, thank you for Jesus. And wouldn't mind at all if you just rapture us out of here before I'm even done teaching this. But uh, in the meantime, find us faithful, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> uh, we left off in our last study, and I wanted to make sure we covered uh, all that material. Uh, but I want to mention a couple things in that last verse, because that sets the stage for where we're jumping in here. Verse 67 says, And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. And uh, just a couple interesting things about that I didn't have time to mention. Um, <clears throat> number one, it says that he loved her, and that's the first time where we see the, the word love used. And um, uh, obviously it's a very touching um, comment on how Isaac loved Rebecca. But the next two times, uh, in uh, Genesis 25:28, we'll see it says, "And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob." So the next time you see the word "loved," it's because uh, Isaac loves Esau's uh, meat, his venison that he fixes. And then the time after that, it's Rebekah loving Jacob. But then in Genesis 27, 4, uh, it says, in Isaac speaking, he says, And make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat. <laughs> that just means that half the time, in the first four times the word love shows up, half of those references are to uh, loving meat. I just think that's interesting. Then the... Uh, Phrase two that Isaac was comforted after his mother's death, and uh, that just again sets the tone of this relationship that Isaac had with Rebekah. And we move right in now to verse one of chapter 25. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And uh, I, I just would, I'm not a betting man, but if I was to put down 10 bucks. Um, I would bet that if you ask the majority of profess professing Christians that, uh, you know how they go out on the street, um, Jay Leno made it famous, I think, jaywalking as they called it. <clears throat> you have a guy named Waters who does it now for Fox News. You have Mark Dice and some of these other people that go out and interview people on the street. And I guarantee if you ask the majority of Christians, the mass majority, um, they probably wouldn't even know Abraham was remarried after Sarah's death. And um, if they did, they certainly wouldn't know that her name was Keturah. And that means that they probably don't know anything about the other sons of Abraham and so forth. Because uh, A, people don't read their Bibles, and B, pastors and churches as ministries don't teach the Bible. It's just an amazing thing. You know, when I got saved... It's been 26 or 7 years ago. 
I just expected us to get together as Christians, and one of the things we'd do is open the Bible and read it and talk about it and learn. And we'd have a teacher who would teach, and we could ask questions. You don't, uh, you don't find that in very many churches. I mean, what it just seems like what you should find in every church, every church that exists, you'd expect as a newborn Christian, any new Christian, or anyone who's not a Christian on the street, you, if you ask them, what do, they, what do they do at church? Well, I guess they study the Bible. Yeah, that's what you'd think. That's not what really happens. And so, um, it, maybe that's you. You don't go to a church where a pastor or any of the teachers really teach the Bible, and you haven't um, studied the way you ought to. Well, now's the time. And I'm um, glad you're listening, and we pray you go through all of our studies in Genesis. We've gone through Revelation, the book of Mark, the book of Galatians, etc. Pray you go through all those with us. And here we see in verse 2 that she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. So you can start counting these. And uh, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, Shua, verse 3, Jokshan begat Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Ashuram and Latushim and Leumim. So you got six more sons. And then he has grandsons. And since they're mentioned, you know, Jokshan begat Sheba, Sheba and Dedan and so forth, you have to believe that that must mean that uh, those, those were possibly born um, while Abraham was still alive. <clears throat> Because he lives, we'll see, he lives to be 175 years old, so it's very, very possible. And then um, he had gr uh, grandsons, sons of Dedan, Ashuram and Latushim and Leumim. And it says the sons of Midian, verse 4, Ephah and Ephor and Hanak and uh, Abida and Elda'ah. All these were the children of Keturah. So after Sarah dies, Abraham has a big family. And just as you read through those, hopefully you, you recognize or you will look, come to recognize some of these names. Um, but there's something I want to mention. Is you have um, Sheba and Dedan mentioned. <clears throat> and here's where the skeptics love to create a lot of unnecessary problems. But um, you'll find that um, Sheba and Dedan is mentioned in what you call the Table of Nations as uh, children of uh, Ham through Cush and Ramah. And now you have another Sheba and Dedan, children of Abraham. <clears throat> and they make a big deal like that's, that they actually teach. You'll find they, they'll actually claim that this is an error and it's confusion on Moses' part or on whoever they claim in the JEDP theory and all these others, whoever wrote the book of Genesis was confused. No. There's, you're confused if you're teaching that. You're confused, Mr. Commentator. You're confused, Mr. Scar scholar. There's plenty of times throughout Bible history, plenty of time throughout history, that the same names are used, and not only just once, but twice. Uh, and uh, the fact that there was uh, sons of Rayama who were Sheba and Dedan doesn't negate the fact or somehow contradict the fact that Abraham Keturah had boys, and they named two of them Sheba and Dedan. And I believe you'll see that uh, that's, and there, there's some disagreement, there's there's not a hundred percent assurance, but I, I believe that if you look at the Queen of Sheba in 1 Kings 10 and the Ethiopian eunuch in uh, Acts 5, I believe that they are from the, the uh, Hamitic Sheba and Dedan. Um, that settled down into um, uh, Egypt and then down into Libya and then into what we would call Ethiopia today, Cush. And then I believe that the Sheba and Dedan of Abraham and Keturah um, would have stayed over in modern uh, Saudi Arabia in that area. <clears throat> now we don't know that 100% for sure, but you're going to see in 1 Kings 10, there's Queen of Sheba. You're going to see, um, and the, as I said, the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 5. Um, and the Ethiopians have traditions all about this stuff. You can read up on. And then you'll see a Sheba and Dedan in Ezekiel 38 that 
uh, I can quote it, it says, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, talking about Gog and Magog, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? See, when uh, during the Gog Magog War, there's going to be some of these countries who aren't going to jump in with the Islamic Confederation of uh, Turkey and Libya and Persia and uh, some of these other countries who join with Russia. And uh, it appears that uh, Saudi, and Ra Saudi Arabia may be one of those who uh, goes to the United Nations and lodges a protest. They don't get involved, they don't defend Israel, but they protest. And it's just a note, you know, when uh, uh, you hear the, uh, the, the Levant referred to among the I Islamic state. Uh, that's the difference you'll hear most people call uh, what's going on here in 2016 and uh, the Middle East. You have the Islamic State and some call it ISIS. Others call it uh, ISIL with the L referring to Levant and the, our Muslim president <clears throat> Barack Obama uses that term. And uh, if you look at historically that covers the whole area down into uh, Egypt and, and Libya back over toward uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, up into Syria, modern Syria and Iraq, part of Iraq, which is where they are now. So there's just a lot of connection between what we're reading and what's taking place throughout Scripture and what's taking place now, but it can get a little dicey and you've got to be careful who you uh, trust when you read up on this stuff. So uh, let's pick up verse 4 or verse 5, I'm sorry, it says, And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but, verse 6, unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had. Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. So to Ishmael and to uh, Keturah was considered a concubine in the sense that, you know, Sarah was his wife. And um, uh, she could tour, get, bear him sons just like a concubine would, and that's why the reference is here made to her. A, a concubine is a wife, but it's just a term used to differentiate between uh, the place that women play in a situation where a man has more than one wife. And uh, so you have the children of the concubines would include Keturah's children and Ishmael. Abraham gave them enough to set them up to make a way, to make their way through life. And um, and he, uh, but he gave the bulk of his estate um, and all that remained after he set the boys, other boys up. Um, there'd been seven, counting Ishmael. He'd set them all up, and then everything that was left he gave to Isaac, and that was the bulk. It wasn't just the leftovers. <laughs> and um, it's just uh, I don't want to walk away from this too fast. We're going to see um, uh, these boys that were born to Keturah and and. Um, Media, uh, the Midian. He says there's uh, Medan and Midian, and uh, from one or both of these come the Medes, and uh, the you have the Medan uh, connection to the Medes, and uh, we're going to see that connection to Persia, the Medes and Persians. We'll see that connection uh, throughout the Old Testament. And uh, Cyrus of Persia, um, he's going to uh, basically call for the rebuilding of uh, Jerusalem um, that will be fulfilled uh, when Artaxerxes sets the order down in 445 B.C. And that fulfills uh, or sets the stage for the fulfillment of Daniel 9, 24-27, Daniel 70 weeks prophecy. And leads to this after 69 weeks, the Messiah Jesus showing up, being cut off, I believe, in 32 A.D. Um, king Ahasuerus, who Esther marries, is the king of the Persians, and uh, there's a connection there to the, the Medes and the Persians. <clears throat> um, but uh, a couple of references we'll see in Daniel: um, the ram in Daniel 8:20, for example, is Media and Persia. So there's a they're just inseparable connection there in terms of Bible prophecy and um, the king of Persia in Daniel 10. Uh, but you come all the way to Acts chapter 2 and the Medes are represented on the day of Pentecost. 
So again, it's great to learn these names and become familiar with what you're reading about. And uh, so we come to the end now. We've read about Abraham's extended family after Sarah died. And uh, verse 7 says, And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, and 103 score and 15 years. So he lives to be 175 years old. That's uh, almost three lifetimes of the t typical man these days. I mean, if you live to be 60, you've lived a good old age as far as human history from the time of um, the patriarchs on down to our day. Um, you know, we got used to, we're, we've gotten used to people meeting that um, the psalmist, uh, I believe it refers to 75 years or uh, 72 years. I have to look that up sometime. I refresh my memory, but you know, through the years, a lot of times the the median age, the average average age, was like in the forties because of infant mortality and because of disease and everything. So, if you live to be sixty years old, you're living a pretty good uh, to a pretty good age, historically speaking. And uh, so, three of those lifetimes would be one hundred eighty years. He's just five short of that in his lifetime. So, Abraham lives. A good old age and I love this in verse 8 it says then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age 175 an old man and full of years and was gathered to his people um, when it says he gave up the ghost that means he gave up his spirit his spirit left his body his spirit goes to paradise his body was then buried but his spirit goes to a place that would later be called by Jesus Abraham's bosom in Luke 16 22 and uh, and it ends with saying he was gathered to his people that's talking about his spirit his body was laid in the grave not gathered to his people I've heard people try to explain that by pretending that being gathered to your people means being buried in the same cemetery because he is uh, buried in the same cemetery as uh, Sarah verse 9 says and his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. But that's not what it's talking about, gathering to his people. Um, there, are, there are men who are gathered to their people but aren't buried next to their people in the Bible. And so we know that's not what it means. Um, he's gathered his people when he, his spirit goes to a place called paradise. Jesus told the thief, today I'll, you'll be with me in paradise. And where was that? That's when Jesus went down and led captivity captive and took the believers out of paradise in Abraham's bosom and took them to heaven. And so uh, uh, he's buried bodily in the same place he had purchased, and we read that back in uh, chapter 23, where Sarah is laid. Verse 10, the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. So they had a little burial plot there for Abraham and Sarah. And uh, Isaac and Ishmael uh, buried uh, their their dad. Verse 12, um, or, or first, verse 11 says, And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the well Lahiroi. Now, um, uh, in verse 9, it said that Isaac and Ishmael had come together and they had buried their father. They're not enemies. I think sometimes people get the idea that since Ishmael um, gave birth to some tribes that turned out to be enemies of Israel that they were enemies. They weren't. Israel and I, uh, Isaac and Ishmael, they had some sibling rivalry issues that we read about uh, previously, but there's no evidence they were anything other than good half-brothers. And so this is a touching burial experience. Um, and Abraham blessed Isaac. And Isaac dwelt by the well, Lahiroi, that's Beer Lahiroi, which again is where Hagar was visited by the Lord. Um, and uh, God had promised Hagar that Ishmael would be a great nation. And in the following verses, we'll see Ishmael's sons, and you add them up, and you're going to see that it's very similar to how God fulfilled the uh, promised Abraham through Isaac and then Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Keep that in mind as we read. Verse 12 says, Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. 
and verse 13, and these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, Nebajoth is one, and Kedar, two, and Abdil, three, and Mibsan, four sons there. Verse 14, and Mishma, five, and Duma, six, and Masa, seven. Verse 15, Hadar, eight, and Tima, nine, Jetur, ten, Naphish, eleven, and Kadima, twelve. Verse 16 says, these are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their castles, twelve princes, according to their nations. So uh, this is, I believe, part of what's used by some in the Islamic world um, to cause some confusion because they try to claim that the promise has been corrupted in the Bible and that the promise was actually to Ishmael. And they've used this fact that he had 12 sons but that's just an abuse of the text. <clears throat> uh, there were 12 princes. God had promised that Ishmael would be a great um, nation. And uh, they would be sort of like the United States has 50 states, but they were considered one nation under God. And the same thing was true of the Ishmaelites for some time. They had 12 princes and so there were like 12 nations like the states of the United States of America were like nation states but they were uh, as one nation and so the promise to Ishmael is fulfilled. I love the fact that it says these are their names by their towns and by their castles and um, some of the skeptics like to make a big deal about that but the fact is you go back and you'll find evidence of castles uh, during that time so it's not some kind of discrepancy in the Bible <clears throat> and uh, verse 17 says and these are the years of the life of Ishmael and hundred and thirty and seven years and he gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people and again um, it's important I believe to point out that it, as we said his body was buried his spirit was gathered um, unto his people. Who is, who's that? That's Abraham. I, there's no indication that Ish, Ishmael was anything but a good, God-fearing son of Abraham, half-brother to Isaac. I believe we're going to see Ishmael in heaven. Now, his offspring fell away. Um, but, the, you know, you go look at Noah. Noah had three sons, Ham, uh, Shem, and Japheth. And through Shem, we get Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the, and the nation of Israel. But most of Shem's offspring and most of Ham's offspring and most of Japheth's offspring would, would uh, fall away. But that doesn't mean Ham and Japheth themselves were terrible people. Ham had his issues, obviously, but uh, doesn't mean he isn't in heaven. I think uh, there's a lot of folks get the wrong idea the wrong notion about some of these uh, folks. You know, all the men of God make their mistakes. And uh, But if they are God-fearing men who turn to God and um, believed the Lord, just like Abraham, his uh, God would uh, reward their faith and impute his righteousness unto them just like he did Abraham. Um, it's one of the things about this dispensation people get wrong is they, they're always calling it, and I I'm, I, I say they, I'm one of them. I have to watch myself. Um, refer to this dispensation we're in right now as the, dis, the dispensation of grace. and it, It's actually the dispensation of the gospel of grace um, because every dispensation had grace. And if it wasn't for that, none of, no one would be in heaven <laughs> in those dispensations. And, um, you know, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Um, so there's dis there's grace in every dispensation. This is right now we're in the dispensation of the gospel of grace, and um, or you can say the dispensation of the gospel of the grace of God, if you want to say that. Um, but that comes to an end with the rapture, and uh, sometime shortly after the rapture, the uh, antichrist will uh, confirm the covenant of Moses 
with Israel and it will become a world recognized confirmation of the covenant. The world government will allow this. It will be basically between the world government and Israel. And so then that will mark the beginning of the seven year countdown of the 70th week of Daniel and uh, which culminates in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, I mentioned that because we had earlier referred to this uh, when it comes to Daniel 70 week, 70th week and we see the Medes and the Persians all coming back to play uh, from where we read right here with Abraham. So verse uh, 18, we're going to close out um, this study, the first half of Genesis chapter 25, and we'll read. It says, And they dwelt from Havilah unto Shur, that is before Egypt, as thou goest toward Assyria. And he died in the presence of all his brethren. And uh, if you look that up, uh, I believe uh, Shur is basically in the area of Babylon or modern Iraq and Havilah um, goes uh, down toward the northern area of Saudi Arabia near the Persian Gulf and um, a lot of this is again I think some of it's just guesswork Other, others will I, I get emailed I probably will because I'm addressing it here, and I'll get emails and messages from people who say they know exactly. But they all I'll get three or four guys who send me that stuff, and they all contradict one another. And we, But we do believe it's in that general area and could run up all the way up to the south end of the Black Sea, around, the, I believe, Turkey is over in that area. Um, and, and modern Syria, Iraq, Iran, that whole area that today is the hot, bed of uh, Middle Eastern war and terrorism and everything that's going on. So this is a good portion of scripture to sink your teeth into, uh, familiarize yourself with the names. You're going to come across these later and as you read through the Bible it'll help because you'll, you'll see them and you'll think, oh yeah, I remember that. And then if you're like me, sometimes you'll say, oh I should remember that and you have to go look it up. And that just makes uh, Bible study that more interesting. But that's why the Bible says to study, to show um, thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Too many people want Bible study to be like eating pudding. You just have to, you know. No, uh, Bible study is like a fork and a knife, cut, chew, you know, and you need some fruit, or you need the vegetables with your meat, and you need some something to drink to wash it down, and you know. But you even had to do something to prepare the meal, or to work to have to pay to have the meal prepared, etc. That's the way the Bible is. Bible study, it's work. It's not, if you you listen to me teach, but you had better read this book and spend some time doing your own work, and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. And as you read through Genesis, as we continue, take note of these names, and it's going to be amazing the times you'll be reading through the Bible and those names will come up and you'll go, oh, wow, and it just adds so much to your understanding and appreciation of this amazing book with more than 40 authors, uh, with uh, 66 books, no contradictions, all one unit, one book, infallible Word of God, King James Version in English. Amen. For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.